I have the Snapdragon powered Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra with me here today, and we're gonna be putting it up against four other Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 run smartphones, as well as its two greatest rivals, the Google Pixel 6 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max in this extremely detailed 100 to 0% battery drain test. The Galaxy S22 Ultra, Oppo Find X5 Pro and OnePlus 10 Pro all share the same sized battery at 5000 milliamps. The iQ9 Pro has a 4700 milliamp hour cell, the Xiaomi 12 Pro a 4600 milliamp hour capacity, the Pixel 6 Pro a 5003 milliamp hour battery which is the largest of the bunch and the iPhone 13 Pro Max has the smallest of the lot at just 4352 milliamps. All seven devices have been updated to their latest available software updates and even though the Samsung shows cell reception bars at the top of its screen I can assure you that all devices are sim free. All of these smartphones are kitted with 120 hertz LTPO displays and while the Pixel and iPhone can refresh between 10 and 120 hertz the rest of the devices are running the latest LTPO 2.0 display tech which can refresh between 1 and 120 hertz. All of the Android phones house a WQHD plus resolution and the iPhone has a resolution which sits somewhere between QHD and Full HD. I have kept all apps that we'll be running through today exactly the same as all of my previous battery tests so that you can compare results to all other smartphones tested on my channel. Who will come out on top of this 2022 flagship battery life drain test? This is Technic and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get things going, it is worth making sure that all phones are currently plugged in charge, which they are, and all of them sitting at 100%, which they are. We'll be using an infrared heat gun over here to make sure that we can accurately check the temperatures during each time interval, sitting at around a room temperature of about 18 degrees in Celsius, and testing out the temperature at the start of the test isn't very accurate since they're all currently plugged in charge. When we test them out during each time interval, which we'll get to in a sec, we'll be checking the temperature while they're draining. Unplugging each device from left to right, hitting the start timer on the right hand side, we do have the time interval at the top right hand corner. All the percentages above each device, below the branding of each device, is in relation to that time interval time at the top right hand corner and is not currently in real time. Of course, charging temperatures aside, the iPhone was the coolest and the OnePlus was the hottest. But what happens after the 30 minute mark interval? Well, the Samsung is sitting at 95%, 100% still on the Oppo and OnePlus, 96% on the iQ, 99% still on the Xiaomi 12 Pro, 95% on the Pixel 6 Pro, and 98% on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. The Pixel 6 Pro is currently the hottest and the Samsung is currently the coolest. But do bear in mind that Samsung have actually stated that they have throttled the S22 Ultra due to the crazy bad heat dissipation that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 generates. And you've got to bear in mind as well that I am rocking the Snapdragon and not the Exynos variant in this test so that we can safely compare it to that of the Oppo, OnePlus, iQ and Xiaomi over here all running the exact same Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 powered chipset run on four nanometer process node technology. At the bottom of the screen, for any of you that are a bit rusty on specs, we have the battery capacities of all devices, as well as all the specs that we mentioned at the start. All Android phones are sitting at 12 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM, while the iPhone just has six gigs of LPDDR4 X RAM. After an hour and a half, we have 91% on the iPhone, which is leading the pack over here. Second to that is the Oppo Find X5 Pro, strangely enough, with 90%. Just behind that is the OnePlus 10 Pro with 89%, the S22 Ultra and iQ9 Pro are sitting at the same percentage of 86%, and trailing behind is the Xiaomi and Pixel, and getting to the two hour mark interval, we have 80% on the Samsung, 85 on the Oppo, which is matching that of the OnePlus, 81% on the iQ, which is not far behind those, 79% is the Xiaomi, 78%, Trailing the pack here is the Pixel and leading the pack still is the iPhone 13 Pro Max. The iPhone is now the coolest in terms of interval and peak and the hottest in terms of interval of that two hour mark interval is the Xiaomi, but the hottest peak so far is strangely enough, the Pixel 6 Pro. The Samsung still keeping pretty cool, not as cool as we would like, but still pretty cool considering the chipset that's inside of it. And after two hours and 30 minutes, we have the Samsung on 75%, which is 5% behind the Oppo at 80%. 81% is a percent ahead of the Oppo, that being the OnePlus. 76 percent is the iQ, 73 percent matching the pixel is the Xiaomi and leading the pack Still, no surprise, the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Just for those who have not noticed yet, at the bottom right hand corner we do have the current app that we're 
currently on, as well as what we're doing within that app. So right now we're in settings and we're checking the battery percentage and after three hours, we have 72% on the Samsung, 77% still beating the Samsung is the Oppo with the same sized battery at 5,000 milliamps, but beating the Oppo with the same sized battery is the OnePlus 10 Pro, even though they're essentially exactly the same phone since they're rocking the same software and pretty much all hardware specs aside from the cameras, sitting at 78%, 72% on the iQ, 68 on the Xiaomi, 69 on the Pixel, now beating the Xiaomi and 82, still leading the pack is the iPhone, the iPhone still leading the pack after three hours and 30 minutes is sitting at 79%, 65%, which is not trailing anymore is the Pixel since the one right at the bottom is the Xiaomi this time around, 68% on the iQ, beating that is the Oppo and OnePlus at 73 and 74% respectively. And between those is the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra at 67%. The S22 Ultra actually still has the exact same battery capacity as last year's S21 Ultra, which I got a bit of a mixed bag in terms of scores. I've seen nine hours on the S21 Ultra, I've seen seven hours, I've seen eight hours. It will be interesting to see what happens with the S22 Ultra and also stay tuned for more battery drain tests, which include the S22 Ultra since it fluctuates over time. And this guy pretty much just got unboxed the other day. So did the rest of these phones, by the way. So they're all nice and sparkly new. And a good thing to note here is that the Oppo actually turns its screen off when recording selfie or back video after about two minutes. Very strange, I did look around the settings and there is nowhere to change this. So you have to tap it to preview, but it still doesn't really save battery life the way that you would think it would because now it's 2% behind the OnePlus, 55% on the Samsung after four hours and 34 minutes, 55% on the iQoo matching that, 49% the Xiaomi is still trailing, 2% in front of that is the Pixel with 51%, still leading the pack is the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And when it came to video recording with the selfie as well as the back camera video recording, you might've noticed that I tested out 1080p 30fps with selfie and 4K 30fps with back even though most of these devices can actually hit up to 60 FPS at 4K on the front or the back. I've kept it the same as previous tests so that you can compare the results at the end of this test to all smartphones tested on my channel before it. And just to let you know, don't compare this test with other battery drain tests made by other channels around. You can safely compare it, however, within my channel. After five and a half hours, we have the Samsung sitting at 31%, 35% on the Oppo, 38% on the OnePlus, 23% really lagging behind after that first two benchmarks on the iQ. Xiaomi also 20% lagging behind there, 28% now on the Pixel, quite a way ahead of the Xiaomi this time and 50% on the iPhone. Now, just to let you guys know, I usually run through GFX benchmarks since I like to keep all things the same and we couldn't do it because even though I tested prior to the test that the Xiaomi and all other phones work with it, but the Xiaomi would not open GFX bench during the battery drain test, which is super odd. Nevertheless, it's still there. And talking about phones that are being odd, the iQ9 Pro with a 4,700 milliamp hour battery just died after six hours and 10 minutes. And it had a peak temperature of 75.1 degrees in Celsius and ended with 61.1 degrees in Celsius, which is the hottest temp in terms of peak I have ever seen on my channel, period. And after six hours and 28 minutes, the Xiaomi 12 Pro knocks out, which is not exactly good. It's not exactly bad. It's somewhere in between considering previous Xiaomi devices have never really fared well in these battery drain tests of mine. And even though we do run benchmarks, it's not because I'm trying to kill the phones quicker. It's because I'm trying to simulate high performance gaming and I can't exactly play seven high performing games on seven different devices with just two hands. Anyway, we're on subway surface at the moment. After six and a half hours and now nearing that seven hour mark interval, we have the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra at 7%, beating that the Oppo with 9%, 14% on the OnePlus 10 Pro via, 2% on the Pixel 6 Pro about to knock out, and 30% on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. iPhone still the coolest over here. Pixel had the hottest interval, and of course, hottest peak, which will not change, is the iQ9 Pro at a crazy 75 degrees in Celsius. Once the Samsung reaches below 5%, it actually locks itself and dims every 30 seconds, which made it extremely annoying for me. I had to tap the screen every 30 seconds to keep it going. The Pixel, while that happened, died over there, seven hours and 15 minutes. Not too bad, pretty consistent in terms of my last battery drain test, which we'll get to at the end of the test. So yeah, I had the best percentage per minute drain as well as the best milliamp hour per minute drain. And the S22 Ultra, not far behind that, ending off with seven hours and 24 minutes is not good especially not when compared to its predecessor. I'm not sure if that S Pen is sipping some juice over there now that we have an S Pen inside 
an S series lineup and not a note series. Gone are the days of the note. Nevertheless, seven hours, 30 minutes. We have 3% on the Oppo, 8% on the OnePlus, 24% still on the iPhone. It is still the coolest and the Oppo was the hottest in the last interval. And the Oppo says cheers to us after seven hours and 45 minutes, which is actually pretty good compared to its predecessor, which once again, we'll get to at the end. The OnePlus, how much longer can it reach? Can it get to eight hours? And it does. It makes it with 3% left of juice still in the tank, 15% still on the iPhone. iPhone is now the hottest after that last app that we ran through, but still the coolest peak over here. And getting to eight hours and 10 minutes, the OnePlus says, all right, I've had my fun for the day, which in all fairness is pretty darn decent fun since it did a great time of over eight hours, which is amazing battery life. Over nine hours is just outright insane. Anything over five hours is good if you ask me. Over six is great, but over eight is superb. Over nine, I guess, is has its own category name called iPhone, or I guess you could say Asus ROG phone. Eight hours and 30 minutes, 11% on the iPhone. Still has the coolest peak. Of course, we can't compare the interval degrees in Celsius to any other phone since the rest of them have all gone away. iPhone trumping over here, coming out on top. No surprise since Every single test I've done pretty much, as long as it doesn't include a massive 6,000 milliamp hour battery capacity beast like an Asus ROG phone, the iPhone usually comes out on top. Most of the time over nine hours, sometimes very seldom over 10 hours. How is this one gonna fare over here? Nine hours it did hit with 6% left in the tank, recording selfie video, back video, subway surfers, going through a whole bunch of games the exact same way that I did at the end of every single drain test ever done on my channel. 3% left after nine and a half hours. Can it reach 10 hours though? I mean, that's a bit of a stretch. 30 minutes with just 3% left. Currently in Helix jump over here. What's gonna happen, Mr. iPhone? We know you've won, but by how much? And there it goes. Nine hours and 47 minutes. Still absolutely ridiculous in terms of screen on time for the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And I would say I'm surprised, but I'm really not since every time I've tested an iPhone on my channel, it dominates in terms of screen on time. Seventh place over here, the iQ9 Pro, six hours and nine minutes with a pretty decently sized 4,700 milliamp hour battery is not the best, but over six hours is still great battery life, guys. Xiaomi 12 Pro beat it though in sixth place with six hours and 28 minutes. Not much better in terms of screen on time when compared to the iQ, but it does have a slightly smaller battery at 4,600 milliamps. The largest battery of the lot though hit fifth place here, the Google Pixel 6 Pro at seven hours and 15 minutes, but over seven hours is still amazing battery life. So props to you, Google. We have the Galaxy S22 Ultra in fourth place over here with seven hours and 24 minutes. Still has the same sized 5,000 milliamp hour battery size as its predecessor. I'm not gonna lie, it kind of disappointed me a bit in this test. The Oppo Find X5 Pro made it to third place. Very impressed by this guy, seven hours and 45 minutes. Though the next phone coming up is essentially the exact same phone, that being the OnePlus 10 Pro, even rocking the same sized battery at 5,000 milliamps, same software, that being ColorOS, eight hours and 10 minutes. Good job, OnePlus, I've never seen you perform so well in a battery drain test. But of course, the Crown King, still first place, of all time on my channel, the iPhone 13 Pro Max, nine hours and 47 minutes, though it has hit 10 hours before in the past. And it's worth mentioning that the iPhone stayed the coolest pretty much throughout the entire test, though the Samsung was a close second if you ask me. The iQ got the absolute hottest in terms of end temp and peak temp, reaching 75.1 degrees in Celsius, which is the highest I have ever seen on my channel. Now, if all of these devices, based on their milliamp hour permanent reading, had the same sized battery at 5,000 milliamps, so same as the Samsung, Oppo, and OnePlus, similar to the Pixel over here, the iQ would boost up to six hours, 33 minutes. The Xiaomi would come up to seven hours and two minutes, and the iPhone, my goodness, 11 hours and 14 minutes. I really hope that they chuck in a bigger battery with Apple's flagships going forward. And if we compare them to their predecessors, right at the top of the screen over here, the S22 Ultra got seven hours and 24 minutes, but its predecessor, the S21 Ultra, got an average of seven hours and 57 minutes. The iPhone actually trumps its predecessor, the 12 Pro Max, which did it in nine hours and 17 minutes. This one got nine hours and 47 minutes. I haven't tested out any Pixel 6 Pro predecessors before, but I have tested it out on my channel and its last test got seven hours and 30 minutes, pretty similar to this one. The Xiaomi 12 Pro got six hours and 28 minutes, which is identical to the Xiaomi Mi 11 Pro, which got around six hours and 32 minutes, and that actually had a bigger battery. I did not test out the iQ 8 Pro on my channel in terms of battery drain, but the iQ 7, the Chinese variant with a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, which is 700 milliamps less than this, got six hours and 34 minutes, whereas the iQ 9 Pro got six hours and nine 
9 minutes. The Oppo Find X5 Pro did marginally better than its predecessor, which got 7 hours and 6 minutes with a 500 milliamp hour smaller battery. And the OnePlus 10 Pro also did significantly better than its predecessor, which got 7 hours and 29 minutes, which is no match for the over 8 hour screen on time of the OnePlus 10 Pro. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. This is Technic, and I'll catch you in the next one.